Uh, red side bands, a little bit more important. Need to focus out that rise. Don't want to give it to Tank, who is a brilliant rise player. Yeah, and remembering that last game, all of the bands were for Flandre. Echo, Fizz, and Trundle and the three bands from Newbie this time around. They have had to go for the rise on red side, and they're going to commit to an Echo, but I would not advise them banning the Trundle. In fact, they should probably just ban Kindred. Well, Kindred is, of course, available. Can be taken away. SOFM probably doesn't care too much about it. We'll see what Newbie are going to do, though. Because they could set themselves up for possibly, you know, guaranteeing the Lucian, something like that. Yeah, actually, that's a good question. Like, at this stage, because it is only first picked a snake, they now need to kind of choose between the Kindred and the Lucian. You would imagine Lucian based off game one's performance. Yeah. And it feels like Kindred, Lucian, Trundle are but sort of the options here, right? They definitely don't. They still want to get it off Swift. However, we know that Swift can play the Graves, can just do the same thing that SOFM did, theoretically. Yeah. He can. He absolutely can. And Snake are obviously going to be changing up their strategy in game number two, giving over, once again, with knowledge, the Lucian that Martin performed so well on. You would imagine Martin might not go for the Sivir this time around, though. Though I would value the Karma at the very least for Jay-Z. Oh, yeah. Also a first rotation option here by Newbie. Yeah, they have to focus Fondre. The Trundle denial pick. Fondre can, of course, just do what V did and pick up the Fiora if he feels like it, but we'll see exactly what he wants to do. Fondre would, too. Yeah, he would. He so would. Hmm. Oh, this is interesting. I don't know about that. Very interesting. Okay. So Swift going to switch it over. Tank looking at the Lissandra. As we would have expected if he wasn't going to get the super powerful Vladimir. I mean, Lissandra is his key pick. It's what they were able to win games on. That and this. And that, yep. He also is an Azir player. That seemingly has it taken his away from him. <laughs> the Azir isn't what he's good at, necessarily. He's always been good at multiple champions, Tank. He's just kind of never really shone on too many. Yeah. I'm just questioning why... Dade and the side of Newbie really wanted to highly prioritize their mid laner, remembering they're on red side as well. So are they overvaluing a flex pick between Trundle in support and top lane to change their draft order? Lucian was still there. Like, they literally hovered the Lucian and said this is a good option, and then just lovingly gifted that over to Martin if he so chooses. It's a very scary prospect here, as they didn't need to rush into picking up that mid laner. Tank was hovering the victor, but just grabbed the bottom lane. The Karma, the Lucian, both of them picked up. Martin showed phenomenal power on the, uh, the Lucian pickup. Yeah. And Jay-Z empowering him to direct his team around. Not something I would want to do. I will say, though, Newbie should probably put that Trundle in the top lane and just go Sivir Bard and just try and fight them. Yeah. And actually be able to hold their own in a 2v2 scenario, maybe empower themselves and give Swift some breathing room and not just spend the whole game respondent. Or just pick Ezreal. You could then still flex the Trundle and have a safe lane. I was like thinking that. mostly because it's into a Karma that you might want the Spell Shield. Ezreal is always going to be a safe laner. Yep. He's always got a lot of poke and strength behind him. I just figured that they, yeah. Well, if you want safety in the laning phase, Caitlyn would do that for you as well. Swift considering... Couple of junglers possibly lock away. And that is going to be Rex I picked up for Swift. Yeah, well, it is a, a Swift champion. Oh, yeah. If ever I have seen one. He's always been able to hard carry as that tank in the jungle role. So Swift, also a very unique style of play when he plays that Rex. I likes to hover around where this time it'll be SOFM is going to be. Keep tabs on the jungler. Maybe thwart his attempts of aggression that was. So, avidly working in game number one. Oh, most certainly. Oh, you can see Jay-Z. Now thinking about grabbing the victor for Tank this time. Of course, it'll just be a switch over. Tank was considering this one before, but he really has been hovered for a long time, Martin. I really hope you lock that in. If you're going to hover something, you may as well commit to it. You know, yeah. like at least the full hover until one second. Yeah, there's then, like 20 seconds And then just be hovering. Maokai at one second, you know? Oh, is that what's going to happen, Rusty? Maybe. It is a trundle that he's going to be against, so we'll see. I do like this switch over a lot. So Lissandra is going to be picked, and that's Aurelia for Flandre. Oh, God, I love this game. Flandre, man. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, never change. He is such a good carry top laner. But Aurelia, maybe he's practiced on the new patch with the new Trinity Force and decided That's what I was, that thinking. was like, this is so strong, but it doesn't exist yet. We'll see what he goes towards when it comes to item builds. But really, he's just picked a battle bruiser in the top lane. He is not backing down from a fight. Most certainly not. And I guess you get the true damage, so I guess the chomp coming out from uh, Trundle. Uh, still, I mean, taking a melee matchup into a Trundle just always sounds like a bad idea. But it is going to be the Braum picked up for more. So that Trundle is going to be definitely in the top lane. We'll see. Ten seconds. Oh, good point. Thought I still want Bar, there. but Braum works. I appreciate Braum into McKindred Lucian. And Karma to an extent. I was hoping they just switch. Oh, there it is. Rusty gets his wish. And Moore picks up the Bard. Yeah. And look, his Bard has, in the past, been brilliant. And that's the reason I want it, realistically, is because he has been able to initiate. It's been a game-changing champion for this team. Yeah. It gives him the tool to go in. Braum helps your team. If you hit the Q, you could stun them. They could die. But Bard just stuns them himself. And it gives more power to set his team up for success. That's exactly what they need. When they look bad, when they lose, when they win, it doesn't matter as long as Moore is doing his part. Generally, newbie succeed better than they usually do. They certainly do. Snake have changed things up this time around, though. No Vladimir is going to be running around the rift as Flandre takes the Aurelia into the Trundle matchup. See how that one works out. SOFM now up against a tanky Swift on the Rek'Sai. And I think we're going to be looking into the jungle a lot for where this game is going to start out. Yeah, absolutely. Because if SOFM gets another lead like he did before, it's going to be danger times. He's shown he knows how to play with a lead, to say the least. But whilst we look at the jungle and say it's going to be important, we've also got Tank on the Sandra in the middle lane. Lucian on Martin is like... They just have so much damage. Yeah. Flandre on that Aurelia as well. All of these solo lanes could go off and actually hard carry. It's just going to be ridiculous to see, but we'll have to have a look as we hop onto the rift. Thank you, Dade, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Riff Route. Possibly final game of the night. Snake are able to close this one out. Newbie trying to hold on to this best of three series. Yeah. And I'm going to do so with a different array of picks and no Vladimirs to be running around unkillably around the map as well, which is definitely good news if you're a newbie fan. Let me tell you, if this ends up being a 2 0 for Snake, not only will that be a surprise, it'll be a very early night here. It will also make absolutely no sense for the standings, Rusty. Because who's strong against who? What's happening? First thing we need to look at, by the way, is the, uh, the cheeky ward placed in that bush by Nubi. <laughs> the, uh, repressed <laughs> memories are now very much evidenced. Yep. <laughs> Snake don't want the same thing to happen to them. Very well, they're sitting cute. in the bush. It wouldn't happen to them. They are, however, now looking to aggressively stance and may actually... Nothing oh. will happen. Peacemaker sails by unnoticed. Vision granted. And Snake with 1% more of the vote here from the fans. Of course, Newbie retaining a lot of those QG fans. You don't fall for the same trick twice, Snake. If they did, that would be shameful. Yeah. I have a feeling you'd probably deserve they really to be want that this time. to happen. They're looking more towards the blue buff, I would say, though. There's the stun. All right. Jay Z probably has taken enough damage now. The ward died finally, but, you know, half of your health, or a little bit less, is enough to deter you. Hmm. Were they just trying to guarantee standard lanes or something like that? No, uh, they were, I think they were looking aggressively at the blue buff to see if it were to be a late lane swap, or if maybe were to recall, they would actually find them and push them out of the blue. They don't. They do get standard lanes. It's a Caitlyn Bard, after all. Oh, big shove to come out. Of course, like you said, denying any camps. And yeah, Snake are actually committing to this shove as well. Lucian queuing the wave off cooldown, making sure that he can keep them low and hard push the Caitlyn in. Caitlyn 
is the best as an AD carry when she is the one pushing. So there we go, level two picked. Yeah, and massive Mantrid Q to come in. Oh my god, is it happening again? Not quite, but Happy's taken so much damage. No summoner spells to be burnt from the side of Newbie. The Ignite down from Jay-Z. Yeah, and the potion popped from Happy as well, actually causing some issues because he won't even get fully back up to speed. And he's going to be in a difficult position. It's still a Caitlyn after all, and a Summoner Burnt will help their predicament. Swift actually potentially looking to change things up. Yeah, he's going to cheekily make his way in here. Snake seem to have their spidey senses tingling. Yeah. Some sort of idea of what's going on right now. SOFM's close to bottom side, so they're sitting back for the moment. Swift waiting for his tunnel, to be fair. <laughs> This aggression could turn on a dime because SOFM is nearby, but Martin's deep. Yeah, he's wandering. Swift is actually going to come in now. SOFM is right around the corner, but doesn't get the knockup. No, there it is. The double comes in as more taking so much damage. Martin all the way forward. The heal comes in as Martin may have overextended now. And SOFM able to dance forward. We'll see what they can get done. As Martin does still have Flash available. SOFM dancing up. There's a nice Cosmic Binding. As Wolf Spike comes down, SOFM probably needs to be a little bit careful, but the passive from the W helping out. No first blood to go down yet. Yeah, and they make sure they push him out. Look at the CS differential with junglers also at this stage. Oh, Swift God. wasting a lot of time and paying for that time wasted. Swift is going to make his way down here. Jay-Z already in position, though, as the smite comes in. Dade already over here. The Q comes down. Swift is going to be the focus. Oh SOFM just dances out of the way. First blood goes to Martin. And Dade still trying to get work done. Lots of AoE potential oh, no. as the pillar's in a great spot. And happy over the wall. The dashes come in. The answering kill is there as Jay-Z falls. Yeah, they only get the support from Snake and the teleport also being used by V. is going to be quite happy in this top lane. And SOFM bleeds out everything that he can at all times. Now even growing that CS discrepancy with the junglers further. Still a good start from Snake, even though it turned back around in Anubi's hands. Well, that's a serrated Dirk picked up this time for Martin, adjusting that item build. And I believe he's now got a red buff to take to the bottom lane. So that could be pretty scary. Yeah, absolutely. That Lucian's going to be... Quite a force, except that the CS between these AD carries is notably oh, yeah, that's also huge. quite different. This game's got some pretty serious disparities going on. Already. Yeah, exactly. So we'll see whether the first blood gold is going to be enough for Martin. Of course, there is a big way for him to pick up underneath that turret. And we'll at least claw it back within about 10. Yeah, so FM's top side right now. Flandre's just teleported in for this. And there's the Equilibrium Strike, gets himself the stun. Lots of damage coming down from that hit and style. Does have the Sheen already completed. The Flash immediately afterwards and Flandre already ahead towards the top side of the map. Yeah, so V did not find an opportunity to recall and get a proper item in his inventory. A Sheen picked up by Flandre is more than enough damage to secure them that kill. Of course, respective Flashes were used, but once again, I'm looking at the Jungler of Snake and I am just constantly finding myself impressed. He is always where he needs to be. SOFM has just changed this team. They look so, so different. Martin, as we mentioned, red buff here on the bottom side of the map. Not a lot that Newbie can do, but their wave has been shoved towards them. So that gold lead, sorry, CS lead, is going to continue for Happy. Yeah. And Swift pokes his head down even more towards the bottom side of the map. Jay-Z understands, is saying, all right, okay, going to have to get some wards in here. No, he's just going to find him anyway and just kind of say hello. Yeah, there it is. Acting like he had more people there than there are. <laughs> Swift, a little bit scared. <laughs> I would have been too. Was deterred from the random act of aggression from Jay-Z, who, with no one nearby, was like, hey, get out. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? This weird sun lady <laughs> just turns up. Um, Okay. As SOFM is going to find V. There's the wolf spite one more time. Nice pillar comes out. We'll save V's life, or will it? As SOFM continues to go aggressive. Ward gets placed, not destroyed. Always at the right place, though. Swift is about to find him, however, and V does want to turn this one around. Kindred level, level six. six. And Swift is level four. SOFM will have to use the Lambs Respite, but the teleport is coming down from Tank. As SOFM does get it cancelled, but also 
Keeps himself alive using that ultimate. That cooldown now down, though, as Moore finding his way in towards the bottom side. Doesn't get the Cosmic Binding as Martin already able to stop that one, They're but there's still, still a fight top. on the top side of the map. Yeah, SOFM gets to safety. They He's knew Dade okay. was coming. They absolutely saw him through the pink ward that he is about to cross through one more time. So Tank has kind of been given time to work as he would like. They know that SOFM is in this bush as well. The tremor sensors are important in this situation. And it'll at least be a blue buff, but this is the turnaround. Oh, in goes Tank. There's the Frozen Tomb as Happy just gets exploded. The perfect play coming out of Tank. Like, that was, that was the movement they needed. They grabbed the AD carry. Yeah, very well executed on by Snake to get more back in their favor. Naturally, the blue buff was taken for Dade, however. The Azir is going to be still content with this middle lane and its current position. Swift turning things around in game number two also. They're looking like a better side this time around. They are still making active attempts towards victory. It's just that Snake still looks so damn good for some reason. Yep. And it's very confusing. Well, I have a feeling this guy is helping it out as the red buff is going to fall in favor of SOFM. 64 to 55 is a CS on the top side of the map. Splendre building towards a Trinity Force as item number one. I was actually going to ask Iceborne Gauntlet versus Trinity Force as the question. Trinity Force is always better. Always better. 20% CDR is very valuable, and there are a few oh, items. No, no, no. But current Trinity Force, not new Trinity Force. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. That's what I mean. So, okay, like, 20% cool, cool. CDR from the Iceborne Gauntlet would be valuable. You can just go Frozen Heart afterwards anyway. Uh huh. Trinity Force, Frozen Heart, Spirit Visage. Best build. Just pick and choose as you'd like. Nice. And find the extra 10% CDR from, you know, Boots or Runes or something like that. Trinity Force. Oh, yeah, of course. Sorry. Just thinking too old school right now. I'm like, let's go back to the very old Trinity Force. As Swift, waiting for a possible gank onto Flandre, who's just stopped on yep. the top side of the map. He knows that he's zoned from the minions. There's no point in him fighting for those minions. He also doesn't know where Swift is, so erring on the side of caution actually paying off for him because Swift's out of there. And he suddenly, without knowing that Swift had recalled in that bush, times his Q perfectly. Stunning. Don't know how that happened. Iron Don't Jesus. know how he knew, but he did. However, the pressure still gave V way back into that lane, head by about three farm at this point. And I mean, despite the kill, it's still going to be relatively close for the Trundle. Oh, nice work, Swift. One big thing that needs to be discussed is just how proactive, though, Dade has been at the moment. He's now even here to help Swift. Yeah, certainly More been wandering around the map. There it is. Doesn't follow the Sand Soldier in. Is SOFM actually oh, turning wow. things around? Here's the teleport tank. Flashes on top of Swift. Frozen Tomb comes in. It's a really nice Tempered Fate, but is it enough to save Swift? I'm not sure the Cosmic Binding almost was, but Tank locks that one down. Moore did everything he could, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, definitely was not. Tank with the teleport. Once again, Snake, they are just stepping up to the plate. This newbie roster and giving it to them at every opportunity. So we're fam pushing his luck, though, once more. Yep, no surprises. Create space around the map, though. As Swift is going to find his way back in. Thankfully, did make it to level 6, so he can start off that blue buff for Dade if he wants to. Currently about a 2,000 gold lead here at the 11-minute mark for Snake. It's a different team comp, different idea, different plan as they move further into this game. But it's a big Lissandra, so that shouldn't actually matter. It's Martin. Yeah, really nice. He's about to comes just in. That is just so much damage. He was stunned forever. He actually probably could have died if Happy played that a little bit more proactively with the net for more bonus damage. Didn't. SOFM looking for a mark for himself as Swift can't really fight the two level above SOFM, but if Dade's there, he certainly can. Lambs of Spite is going to be available here as SOFM continues to dance around. You can't use your R button if you're in the sky, though. And the Emperor's Divide will certainly kill him. Azir always been known as a good pick into Kindred simply for that fact that even if he uses the Lambs of Spite, you can knock him out of it. And so SOFM predictably going for that mark. And Dade, we mentioned the proactivity starting to shine through because 2 and 0 on this Azir looks entirely different to game number 1. Yeah, this is exactly what we wanted out of Dade as well. Really step up for his team and he's doing so right now. And he is on the champion that can carry in the later stages of the game. Of course, didn't quite manage to last time around, but... It's a very different story. It doesn't have to deal with a big old Vladimir. 
Yeah, Lissandra can be quite oppressive. Oh, More. there's the culling. Moore almost out of position there. Is Happy able to get some work done? Pings down as Lissandra looking once again to try and delve into the bottom They lane. know, but can they stop it is the question. Yeah, the speed up comes in. Karma very, very strong as the Frozen Tomb comes down. Happy not quite able to do too much about it. The exhaust immediately comes down as Happy is going to die, but can... Newbie find anything for it. JC, how is he still alive? Lambs of Spite is in there from SOFM as Tank right up the front line. Can't get back into the Lambs of Spite, but look at the Flandre. AOE. Flandre, can he get the resets? SOFM picks up V as the last kill. The flash for the Equilibrium strikes there. <laughs> Flandre still underneath this turret. He probably will die for it, but they did so, so well as Dade actually cleansed the Equilibrium strike to kill him. Yeah, he did, but Snakes still get themselves a multitude of kills. More Swift and V are down. Dade 3 and 0. He is still the shining light of this newbie roster at 13 minutes in game number 2. Oh, and Dade. that is reflected almost entirely through the damage dealt because he does not have a team right now to back him up. And by those numbers, honestly, it almost looks like he doesn't need one because that is absurd amounts of damage at this early in the game. Yeah, it's easy to say. And this is a reinvigorated Game 2 Dade. Absolutely. And if he can continue that track record in terms of team fighting, there's a chance that he'll scale and actually just outscale all of Snake and solo carry. But sooner or later, Snake will redirect their attention from the bottom lane where they're just getting easy kills to the mid laner of Newbie, who doesn't have Cleanse or Flash and is now seen as the only real threat. That was interesting. That was certainly a thing. Yeah. As shield comes down, Martin not exactly going to be able to remove all of the damage from the ultimate out of Happy, but Happy just going to feel good that he managed to get some of his frustration out. There's the speed up, though. Jay-Z looking to close some distance onto more. Yeah, so the turret's low as well, which is why Martin's making these active attempts towards it. I like the traps, though, out of the Caitlyn. Whoa, nice headshot. That's a lot of damage. There's wow. the teleport coming in behind Tank. Looking for it once again. Happy! Just cannot find his way into this game. Perfect calculation there as Tank decided to try and see whether he could get more. Unable to. The Caitlyn 0 and 3. And we haven't seen this out of comps against Caitlyn's where you just capitalize on the fact that she doesn't have a mid game. They are having a fantastic time in this bottom lane snake and doing absolutely, as you mentioned, just picking on Caitlyn. That's not even the mid game. This is early game as far as I'm concerned for the Caitlyn where she's usually strong. Yeah, but they're putting her into a hole where the Lucian is far enough ahead, which he is, 4-0 and 3. And to no surprise, the Lucian that we thought was going to be picked away from them by the side of Newbie is currently running rampant. Mostly because Tank is there all the time. Yeah, Tank just... He looks like a different player on Lissandra, I swear. So beautiful. You can see close to 100% kill participation in 8 out of 9. 2-0 and 6, facilitating his team. Admittedly, Dade has got a lot of spare time to pick up heaps of farm in that mid lane. Hasn't been kept down at all. Almost has the Rylai's Crystal Scepter. And, and they're swapping lanes enough? again. So this is exactly what Snake did in game number one to grow a gold lead. They were 5k ahead at that point in game number one, given how drastically it went. But a 4-0-3 Lucian and Flandre close enough to having his teleport available. They now switch to the top side of the map. This is actually really good timing for it, given the items purchases as well. Yeah, Trinity Force now done for Flandre. V has managed to find himself a 30 CS lead, though. That is a big deal for this Trundle. Mm -hmm. Definitely is going to be helpful for him, especially when it comes to the split pushing or the 1v1 in the solo lane, I should say. I think both of them will be kind of finding each other at the middle if it comes to a split push. Yep. Some excavation being done by Snake towards the top side of Newbie's jungle as Swift delivering a blue buff over to Dade, but it just looks all too easy as this turret is going to get evaporated. They'll just get two turrets if someone doesn't respond to them. Uh, more? Magical journey. Not going to get delved into as Cosmic Binding was too much of a problem. And you forget what it's like to play against the Trinity Force champion sometime. This time, he's going to remember the hard way. But oh Snake my. are going to keep going. And I said they will actually keep going until V responds. It will keep going until the Nexus is dead. I have a feeling if they're not stopped in some way, Newbie thinking, well, we'll do our very best to try and uh, match you, but that's not happening. The outer turret hasn't even fallen down yet. As t at Tank, he's got free time here in the mid lane. Snake feel like they have more players on the map. 
they basically do, and it's simply because more met for Andre and got out traded. They had to bring Swift down bottom. Dade has cleansed. Yeah, so Frozen okay. Tomb is going to get cleansed, exactly like you said. Tempered Fate avoided, and they take down the outer turret. That is three turrets in a row instantly from Snake, and a massive gold lead has now been accrued of about 4,000 at 17 and a half minutes. Fantastic map movements, honestly, from this Snake side. Whether it's SOFM shot calling or whether it's just their decision making that's just increased tenfold. I don't know where this team has been for the first two weeks of the LPL, but they've definitely arrived in this particular set. It's Dade and friends against a team called Snake. Yeah. Team called Snake backed up by this crazy jungler that just always wants to be in the enemy jungle. Swift has not found a way in to this what series so far. What is Martin building? Uh, he just he wanted the extra attack speed. Now he's building a Black Cleaver. No, because he had the core fields first. Right. Ah, now we're going to find out. We're Are just we? going to quickly have a pause as uh, Martin is going to work out what his build means. <laughs> I believe someone had a problem with it over all chat. Yeah, not no, that's the technical sure. issue for sure. Yeah. yeah, I actually have a feeling it's probably not that. Possibly some sort of ping issue, something like that. We'll be back into the game as soon as possible. But in the meantime, Snake continue to impress. Yeah, they absolutely do. Snake, for some reason, looking fantastic. And we said this during the game. They just haven't really shown up. But for like this exact series... They've worked it all out, and yeah. it does feel like it has to be the addition of the two new members. I say new lightly. Only SOFM is new. Martin's back. Yeah. But, yeah. It's the first time we've seen Martin, though, of course, uh, this split. And this guy looks out of control. And we hadn't seen him playing with Jay-Z. And to be fair, like, yes, like, Jet is going to help his... Uh, laning, strength, and prowess, maybe movement around the map. He's still just Lucian, so sample size is still lacking for Martin. Good point. Good what point. we have seen is jungle pathing, which is something that you can't really, like, once off oh. from SOSF, SOFM being amazing. Well, he's going to cop an ace in the hole for it. But you can see, passive, pretty powerful of the old Kindred. As he's just removing parts of the jungle from Swift whenever he can. Yeah. So Dragon in two minutes is probably the next thing that Snake would look towards. They're running out of neutral objectives or even enemy turrets to take. They have to work around timings. Oh, There's no Rift the Herald. Next one. Yeah, so this one's definitely worth fighting for if you are on the side of Snake. And Red Buff did just spawn, so we'll see whether SOFM decides to pick that one up first before moving over there. However, on the other side of the Rift, we do have Dade picking up the Rallys Crystal Scepter. Happy at least has the uh, Infinity Edge in order to augment some of his damage. And picked himself up some farm, so that is a good news story. Swift now denying a mark from the Kindred. Doing what he can in that respect, and if there's one thing that they have been doing, it's pushing SOFM out of the marked camps. Is that going to be a Ghost Blade Aurelia? It absolutely is. Just all of the damage things. all of the time, Fondre. Well, SOFM just steals an easy uh, red buff away and dances over, finds himself swift. There's a pillar down there to help out, but V knew that this is going to be a problem. Here, the immediate though. flash comes out. Yeah, Flandre is going to get the Transcendent Blade surging across, picks up the kill with the last one. So Subjugate doesn't do anything. He's full damage. Just doesn't care about that ability at all. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> He's built a pillow fort of cupcakes and stuff. And he's like hiding <laughs> behind it. And he's just like daring the Lissandra to come in. But you know what? They're doing Baron. And Jay-Z's 1v1-ing more. And winning as the teleport's coming in. Tank is going to make his proud entrance to immediately be turned gold. As there's the Emperor's Divide. Fantastic time. More still going to die for it though as Tank. Yeah, ain't going to be denied too much. SOFM has to blow the ultimate. As Jay-Z blocks the ace in the hole. Hmm. Not entirely sure what almost killed SOFM. It was, I'm pretty sure, just Dade damage. Either that or Happy somehow hurt him. Either way, Flandre is now in a, a predicament, and Snake are just blowing the map open. Yeah, Transcendent Blades off cooldown already. 20% CDR done for Flandre. This is still an impressive start to this game. We're now 21 in, and still every single person of the Snake team looks strong. Yeah. 5k the lead here at the same time. Tank doesn't have Frozen Tomb available. And this will possibly be 
Yeah, Ocean Drake falls down in favor of Newbie. So good heads up play yeah. on this side. Their heads are still in this one. Oh, yeah. Dade means business. If ever there's a game the Newbie are going to win off the back of this man, it's going to be this exact one. Oh, yeah. And still an overzealous attempt at a Baron is kind of what backfired in that respect. And so they kind of gift over the dragon, capitalized on. It was a mistake, however, from Snake. Well, you can see Martin keeping the pressure on, trying to clear out vision, but they do have a lot of wards around that top side of the jungle. SOFM now just split pushing. You can see he's building towards his Renan's Hurricane as item number two. We'll have a lot of attack speed. Solo laners hate him. <laughs> but when you win the game at the end, you can't help but appreciate him. Damn right. And V, he's cultivating a gigantic CS lead here at the same time. So despite the fact that Flandre is 3-1-2, and two, I have a feeling that V is probably very comparable. That's so satisfying to watch, though. Oh, yeah. Blade Surge, what a brilliant move. Full AD Aurelia can just, like, start last hitting the back lane right now with his QW mm -hmm. because he's going AD. That's the best one. And there's the Ghost Blade as well, already completed. It's a static shiv actually done here from Martin. So that was what he wanted to complete before getting the Black Cleaver. Valuing the wave clear, it seems to be the answer, which means there's a possibility that because Flandre is Aurelia, they need the wave clear. Also, the fact that Tank can split push it is comes down to, be to it. For, like, an accelerated game like this benefiting a little bit more if you are the team that's ahead by being able to shove more quickly? Well, it's also designed to be a two-build wonder, like a Black Cleaver Ghost Blade, so you're meant yeah. to be stronger with those two items, but he's valuing the crit and the wave clear. As... Whoa! Tank flashes onto more. They will be able to get the pick. It's a big cooldown now wasted. Not wasted. Used. As Tank is going to soak a lot of damage there from the ultimate out of Happy. He'll go back. Doesn't have the teleport available just yet as Jay-Z is just trying to keep everyone away. Yeah, but Flandre is also being a pest in the side lane. If they force V's teleport, that's a big success. He may not, but it will mean that there is an abundance of damage about to crash onto this. Yeah, Ghost Blade has been popped. Flandre will get an easy three quarters of that turret's health before V's able to stop it. And by this time, Tank's back. So they can reset, they get an easy pick, a bit of extra gold control of the red side, mostly anyway, jungle area. Neutral enough that they can start up the Baron and they're going to destroy this thing's health bar because look at the damage they do. Yeah, SOFM's got so much attack speed here at the same time as having that Blood Razor. They're away. They are going to peel off it. They didn't get that Ocean Drake, which actually could have been very useful for them in this scenario. As they're trying to keep this Baron under fire. Hmm. Assessing their options, though, Snake, I will ad admire the fact that they just start it instead of baiting it. Good teams never bait, I believe was the... Well, Martin, I don't know why he's wandering down there. There's a huge wave heading towards the top side. However, now moving towards the bottom side of the map now, Snake. Because Red Bam, buff. Yeah, making his presence known. Yeah, picking that one up. V was able to lock that one down, so no Scuttle Crab for SOFM. Next dragon is going to be an ocean. So it could be the second for Newbie. Yeah, and it's pretty far away. So there's no point really stressing about the Scuttle too much. It was just a bit of gold arrive for SOFM. Yeah. And still, they're just going to play around teleport cooldowns. And the Static Shiv has the merit the tank can sit in top lane while Flandre's in bottom lane. I don't know who they would send to deal with him. And that's potentially one of the big win conditions that Snake will have available to them. The Static Shiv is a smart purchase for the sake of winning the team play game. Flandre is building more damage. Is he going Blade of the Ruin King? It could be Blade of the Ruin King. It could be many things, because... Those two daggers have so many build paths available That's to them at the point. moment. It could be a wit's end. <gasps> Don't play with my heart, Rusty. Why not? It got changed. No, not yet. Oh, not yet. Yeah, no, it shouldn't be. It should be if it was on the next patch. Imagine this build on the next patch. Whoa, Aurelia. What a silly champion. I'll right now. I'll disclose some information for you then, Atlas. This is a good build on the next patch. <gasps> Wait, you can't build Dust Blade though, right? No. Damn it. All right. So things still need some work as far as uh, our client is concerned. And so FM should just recall. There's no point hanging around if he's going to be low health and just give time for Newbie to react to your movements. Actually better off resetting. They've already got the vision control there. Yeah, back's actually coming out a lot. And you can see they just take control of the waves and it has bought Martin some time. He wants to go back, grab his Black Cleaver. Is going to be picked up. So just a weird order for the build, but has worked out for him. And still a lot of money being expended. 
Yeah. So they actually... Because he did not sell anything for that. He just had an item slot missing. That's big purchase, big item spike. And across the board from Snake, when we're looking at item spikes, they just got the rapid fire cannon. Everything's lining up for them. It'll be a Phantom Dancer, by the way, for... Yeah, I like that a lot. Whereas on the side of Newbie, they are getting their items, but they're in between components. So if Snake recognized that fact, there is an opportunity for a team fight to break out. Well, speaking of opportunity for a fight, the blue buff is now going to get started for Newbie. They will lock it down. They had full vision on the side of Snake, but they decide that's not what they want to fight for. Dragon going to be up in another 20 seconds. That's, that's the actual prize. That's where SOFM wants to go. The man has spotted an objective on the map. Wants to take it down. Andre just dancing around the rift. Yeah, I didn't think it was worth commentating. Time. I was just like, just look at him go. Just feels good. It's the best. You always want like slow-mo replays of the occasional Aurelia last hit. Oh, Transcendent Blades is going to come out. That is a big cooldown. And V waiting in the wings. Seeing whether he can get the work done. There's the stun from the Equilibrium yeah, Strike. Probably not. And uh, Flandre just says, yeah, I'm just happy to wander away, man. I got a lot of movement speed. Didn't even use the Ghost Blade. And SOFM going to take down the Dragon on his own. Snake still with so much control of this area. Another, a Mountain Drake actually is going to be the final Drake that we're going to see. So no Cloud Drakes. Everything going to be worth stuff. Which is Absolutely. A big deal. And look at how the pressure now changes from Snake. They have to reset that vision, go from Dragon to Baron side of the map. They still have control, but they are up against a huge Azir. And yeah. they're getting their items on Happy on this Caitlyn. They're starting to get the split pushing capabilities of V on that Trundle once he gets potentially the Spirit Visage, depending on where he looks towards with his item build. He might actually just go for the Icebond Gauntlet now instead. Once they start getting these things on the board though, they can look to put up a fight. They do have late game team fighting. And Snake are letting them get there. Yeah, Snake really need to find a way to get a foothold in here because you're exactly right. They're just stalling and Nubia are being able to. And when it's 12 to 3, when it feels like this level of domination that Snake have been able to exact so far, Nubia are doing a phenomenal job of never getting caught. And like to be fair, the gold lead is still quite large. There is still absolute control assumed by this Snake roster. But the point remains, you don't give Newbie a chance. Yeah, you but where's the their team way in? Team. What's just team fighting? Like, there's going to be an Elder Dragon eventually. There's going to be a Baron that people will want to fight for. If Swift can get the steal, if they can get a team fight, Bard ults set everything up for them quite nicely. There's definitely possibilities. And their foot is still holding that door ever so slightly open. It's not closed out on them yet. Yep, another ward heads into that Baron pit. Jay-Z looking to clear everything out of, tu of tunnels. Phantom Dancer now done for Flandre. So he's committed to a split-pushing build mm -hmm. on this Aurelia. Probably wants like a Steric Gauge or something next as well. Maybe even more of Melmordius. I was thinking like, I don't know, Guardian Angel or something like that. Yeah, I don't think there's too much merit in a GA. All right. I like Hysterics. It sounds cool. Bloodthirster if you wanted to go really deep. Mm, there's too much point in that though. Singing the song, Rusty. He's singing the song. Let's go Hex Drink. It'll be fine. I can see Tank. He's building his items as well. Looks like it will be a possible Void Star. Fourth item. It's Lissandra looking very, very strong. Everyone's just kind of petering off at the moment, though. Yeah, no in terms one's really of activity. doing anything. Exactly right. Just chilling out. Man, we've spoken to how strong Snake look for a team fight at the moment. They are still kind of making an effort towards it. But the now it's a three-item Azir and a three-item Caitlyn. They've almost lost that window of being super strong in comparison to these champions that wanted to scale. And for what it's worth, the Lucian will still scale. Maybe not to the strength of a Caitlyn. You know, range advantage. And the Black Cleaver build will get sold eventually. Well, the Ghost Blade aspect of it will. Eventually. Kindred will kind of compensate for that, however. And the biggest thing to me is I'm looking at their roster. I'm just saying, you know what? They have a lot of damage. There's one thing that Snake have. It's damage. They're probably lacking in the defensive department. Yeah. Flandre is a split pusher. He's committed to that. And V is going to be able to handle it. 
Well, Snake have made their way in. Flandre's here now as well. He's got a lot of damage as this Baron is getting melted. Oh my god. Jay-Z just doing battle Swift right knows. now, zoning people out of the way. Tempered Fate comes in, the teleport in the pit. The Baron is super low as Swift wants to find his way over the top. The culling comes in there. There's the Lance Restripe, making sure it keeps the Baron alive. And Caitlyn is dead. It is Swift that takes down the Baron. That's a big deal, but Tank with a huge flanking play will be able to lock something down. There's the ultimate. He puts it down. Oh my god, that Zonya's was so well timed. As SOFM gets it. What? Martin, what are you doing? That's a triple kill for the Lucian. And Snake, they come out ahead, but V survives with a Baron. Yeah, so they get a Baron buff and they deny it from Snake. If Snake got that buff, it could have just been the outright inhibitor. We'll see if they can get anything further from this. Martin is absolutely a hero. And SOFM kind of overreached using that Lamb's Respite early to try and stop the Baron from being stolen, forcing Newbie to commit. There's only so far they can commit. V is a pest. Yeah, Martin was trying to get the work done to that turret, but it's not going to happen. Tank, in the meantime, though, is able to lock that one down. Does need to make his way out. As Considering he barely lived, it was very well executed on by Snake. Yeah. Mostly Tank and Martin. SOFM did his part. Flandre is just destined to die. That's <laughs> basically his item build, but he wants to take someone with him, and I'll say that, you know, reasonably successful in that respect. I have a feeling that this build will really benefit from more of Malmordius, though, especially given the fact that you get that lifeline passive. Mm -hmm. Just extra armor penetration as well. Yeah. He's going to be able to kill anybody except V. Well, that's a bit unfortunate, because I have a feeling that's who he wants to be trying to kill. Look at the damage. Tank. What a went beast. off. That's with an entire Caitlyn health bar included. Mm -hmm. I believe. And then was still able to get so much work done without his ultimate with that flanking play. However, Newbie able to get a turret against the tide. They're looking like they're aggressive here though. There's not too long till the Drake is up. Oh, Flandre has started the commitment to the cause. Immediately gets rid of that minion wave. We'll head his way back around. Snake just keeping their eyes on Yubi right now. They want to make sure that Flandre has the space. There's the pings. They're heading towards the mid lane at the same time. The dragon not going to be an option here as that tower's dead. Flandre has broken open the base. <laughs> there it is. Eventually. And it is going to be in the inhibitor starting to fall already. The damage has been done, though, because Snake now don't need hurt. to try and siege. Tempered Fate Ooh. is going to get rid of Tank. As he has to flash himself out. Ace in the hole comes in. SOFM is going to tank that one up as newbie. Now they want to start a fight. There's a potential flank coming in here as Jay-Z has been caught out of position. Dade immediately removes him. And are there teleports? No, there's not. And tank a snake will be able to make their way out. And Flandre does still have his. SOFM not valuing the karma highly enough to use the Lamb's Respite. They wanted to focus their attention towards the Drake because of the side lane control that is still there on the bottom side for Newbie as well. They actually just cannot afford to fight for this one. They do give that over and everything kind of settles out in a situation where Baron is not there, Drake is not there, and we just don't have an objective to take. It's going to come down to vision, to map movement, and to crisp team play. It was actually the Rabidon's death cap picked up here from Tank as well. He's super strong. One more item slot for that Void Staff to come in. Mortal Reminder is now completed for Martin. Remember, 7, 0, and 4 on the Lucian. Having a yeah. Yeah, career defining game right now. SOFM dances out of the way of Swift, who stops his back with a Prey Seeker. This game really, it's at the point now where this almost 10,000 gold lead. It's within QG team fight levels. Yeah, That's precisely. what this is. And of course, QG now known as Newbie, the team that you're looking at. It is well within their realm of magical, miracle comeback that they can somehow always do and no other team in the world can do. As we can see, Flandre trying his luck one more time. Seeing whether he can take down this turret. He's going to do so as SOFM is going to close in. V may actually be caught out as the Subjugate is put on cooldown. And yeah, there ain't no way you're killing that troll. No, they're not going to kill him. That is nice. Ultimate forced, however. I don't think Flandre was ever going to look to 1v1 him, but I'm saying it's now a realistic possibility, given that it's not there. The tank gets himself to relative safety before getting shot in the back of the head. A lot of ages will heal him back up anyway now. Feels weird saying that, but it's true. Yeah. I was perplexed. 
Flandre finally has some sort of defensive thing in his uh, inventory in form of that ruby crystal. We'll see what he decides to use it for. As I really hope you're right, and it is that Steric's Gauge, although it doesn't have the passive that's stacked with the more What is a Titanic anymore. Hydra as well. Oh. It's entirely possible. That's not that bad of an option. We'll see what he wants to do. Is Martin just shoving out this top wave? The rest of his team waiting around in the jungle beneath him. I was wondering how committed Flandre is going to be to that split push build, because that's pretty deep. Yeah. We are 36 minutes into this game, so split pushing is a reasonably viable strategy still. It's going to take a lot more commitment to team fighting for V. He can hold the fort, but if Flandre keeps him there, then you'd actually favor Snake in that respect. Yeah, some turrets are going to get eaten by the Lissandra here as Snake continue the pressure around this top side. And so 1 minute 20 till Baron. They shouldn't actually find themselves getting any further into the base here, Snake. But what they are doing is bottlenecking Nubia's movements, restricting them to within their own base where possible, and making sure that they just spend this whole minute responding to their movements. Because the second that Baron spawns, let me tell you, that will be taken in no more than 10 seconds if they are all dedicated to hitting it. And Nubia as well. I mean, they've got the power of a... Mountain Drake as well as an Azir and a Caitlyn. So you're exactly right. No matter who gets there, someone going to be killing that Baron real fast. Mm -hmm. They do give them an opportunity, however, to push out now. So Nubi will set themselves up, you would imagine, to at least have vision there. It's the only reason more just went back to base is to get more pink wards, wards, and all assorted goodies to give vision. And there are 100% of the kills are on Dade. Dade is He's the whole newbie. team. We saw the last team fight. He did the most damage by way too much. And Martin finished off a rapid fire cannon as his final item. The double passives that don't stack but can be done one after the other. It's pretty cute. You don't often see that anymore. No. Oh, Baron is going to spawn. SOFM is right in the area. Void Rush is going to get swift over. Uh, I didn't want to hit it. Yeah, probably don't shoot it. Nice shield comes in from Jay-Z. Keep him relatively safe. And Tank now looking for a possible home guard play. So they need to clear out this area of vision. Once again, ace in the hole. But the shield from Jay-Z helping. Yeah, so now they have complete vision. And none actually established by Newbie. They don't have any blue wards either. So Swift has to get close and personal. And look how quick it's going down. Yeah, Teleport actually coming in, committed on here by Tank, who's looking for a they big happy. flank. Yeah, Happy and Swift and Dade all in the same area. As there's the Tempered Fate once again. Tank slightly out of position. It is going to be Dade falling. He was the whole team. We've spoken about this before as SOFM is going to make his way around. And he's still got the Lambs Respite. Swift in so much trouble as Flandre is just deleting people. Oh, getting deleted as well as Happy was actually able to play out that one very, very nicely. Snake moving back towards this Baron pit. Swift was very, very low. Does have the Void Rush back available again. And Martin is going to telegraph where they're going. It is a four versus three. We're looking at Swift this right now. This is so dangerous. This is really volatile. See if he can get it done. He's already inside the pit. It is going to be locked down by SOFM. Swift is going to die at the same time as Jay-Z tanks up the ultimate. Baron now available. Flandre has teleport when he respawns, which will be in about 30 seconds. Is it going to be enough to break open the base? That's the question. Happy's here, and he's got a lot of... up nicely, Snake. It'll give Newbie a bit of respite for wave clear, but we are going to see this one again. The funny thing to note is how long Tank spends suspended in air from yeah. the knock-up of Swift, because watch this. He's still in midair, and he's still in midair, and has to zone. He does get his ult off, though, as he falls down, so very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> that he does. The important part, of course, being that Dade just gets destroyed. Martin puts in so much work in these fights. And the closest part of this all is that if Flandre got happy, it was over. Well, the culling is already flying through here as this turret is going to fall, but Happy takes down Flandre one more time. Martin Ooh, dancing around. Yeah, it's a really, really big tempered fate. Tank and Jay-Z not going to get cosmically bound together, though. As this turret, very close. Is it going to fall? Not sure. Not going to happen. It's not going to fall. It's going to stand. It's one hit. A hair's breath. Yeah, 40 health. Regenerates. But Flandre dead once more. This is actually a big deal as the Elder Drake now have an opportunity here for Snake. I swear Flandre is just trolling. 
I'll have a man disadvantage for this, though. They will. And you can see Nubi have the teleport on the trundle. Swift already clearing that pit out. He knows that they've got a point of power. Oh Never my mind. god, Martin just takes down more. Swift now. Possibly out of position, but they answer the pick with another pick. The numbers I'll raise are even. your pick. More picks. Yeah. They even out the numbers on the map. It's now four on four. Nurello with no teleport to speak of as well, so they can kind of breathe again, Snake. The mistake wasn't game changing. Whenever they want to do this, they can just do it. Well, Swift actually dives his way over the top. Nothing to remove that ward that's inside the Elder Dragon Pit, but it looks like they don't even really care about it here as Snake. No. Uh, just going to cut this one down. Flandre as well is respawned, so he'll get that buff. Swift has made his way in, but he's a one-man army. He's going to die. Martin takes down the jungler. They'll get the Elder Dragon as well, and it's now a 5v4, and Snake are pressing on the base. And take, Tank could just breathe down somebody's neck, and they'd probably die with the Elder Dragon buff to complement his damage. Everything's just about to crumble. Oh, Dade in so much trouble. The Sonyas at the perfect time, and Martin cuts him down with the culling. Moore is going to die as SOFM secures that one, and that piece of play from Tank was why you don't give him Lissandra. Yeah, Snake get themselves the Elder. They've got the Baron buff, and they have the setup now to try and close out the rest of this game. They should just take the top lane inhibitor, but they're kind of posturing around, needlessly fighting right now. Flandre, yes. use your team. Yeah, not happening so far as SOFM finally makes his way through. There's the teleport as Tank makes his way back in. And they are going to be able to take down the Nexus turret. Still too long on the death time as the Nexus falls. It's a 2-0 victory. Snake over Newbie. And on the back of that victory, they will take a well-deserved bow. But congratulations to SOFM for making it into the LPL. Damn right. Welcome, good sir. And two very impressive performances, to say the least. Tank also stepping up to the plate, though, in game number two. Oh, yeah. Showing that Snake Esports is well and truly still a thing in the OPL. And they're not just going to flop every single week. They've and shown what their ceiling is capable of. Well, it's really, really true. And I guess, once again, we are seeing, despite the fact that Snake looks so much better, and SOFM was a big proponent of that, Tank still played godly in both of those games. Yeah. So it's still Snake playing to the ceiling of Tank, regardless. And I just don't know whether that's because SOFM was able to get him to that stage, irrespective, as they do take that well-deserved bow. What a change in this team. I mean, after seeing no. Invictus game...